stood amongst these towering pipes, Victorian hinges, tons of metal and woodwork. The fact that all this was crafted purely in the service of making music is nothing short of incredible. The medieval checkered pattern of streets that surrounded this church were almost completely decimated by a 1960s ring road. But the effect of that is to make this church into a hidden gem, cut off from the centre of Salisbury, yet only five minutes walk from the famous Cathedral Close. The chancel here, like last week's at Barford, is even older than Salisbury Cathedral it's a magnificent space, and it still resounds with the music of plain song, as it has done for hundreds of years. From this ornately crafted high altar, you get a sense of the scale of this building. And you can see one of the more recent additions to this church, the root screen. Here I am, gazing up at a feature which dazzles almost every visitor to St Martin's. This is the 1918 Rood screen. The much admired Rood screen is made of oak and was dedicated in 1918 as a memorial to Lance Corporal Cecil Sandbrook Rawlings, killed in action at Ypres in 1914. One of the most intriguing features of the entire screen is the way it catches the passage of light, particularly as the sun begins to set on summer evenings, the light streaming through the northwestern window, highlighting each of the carved figures in turn. I've not yet delved into the church records here, but given that my family has lived in this parish for generations, it's amazing to see a possible link to my own history within these walls. Near this place is interred the body of Mrs. Elizabeth Mayton, who died January the 5th, 1766, aged 71. As I've walked around, you would have got a sense of the incredible acoustic in this church it carries the human voice beautifully, but wait till you hear the pipe organ. I'm stood at the steps to the organ loft of St Martin's mighty William Hill and Sons pipe organ. These are steps graced by none other than Olivier Latry the chief organist of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. He gave a recital here in 2005 to a packed church. Welcome viewers to the loft of St Martin's Church. This is where I spend my Sunday mornings and most other mornings. It has all the comforts that an organist could possibly need. A lovely carpet, a curtain for privacy. Adjustable bench to cater for organists of all shapes and sizes. And of course, the greatest feature of all, an armchair. The strangest thing about the placement of this organ is that the lovely diapason facade is hidden behind an archway, whereas the uglier bordon pipes are on full display in the church. If you look at the organ from this angle, it's clear that it appears to be pointing the wrong way. The front is facing to the side of the church and the pedal pipes, which you'd normally hide, are clearly visible. There even seems to be a stone cutout in the facade, 
which is presumably where the console was supposed to go. Fortunately, it doesn't make a difference to how this beast sounds. Let's take a look inside. These are the old dusty board-on pipes that I mentioned. These are just some of the pipes that are played with the feet. I haven't even got into the organ yet, but there's already some incredible history here. This thing is now blown by electricity, but before that, it would have been pumped by hand, believe it or not. And the boys who pumped it, presumably uh, choir boys, they've certainly made their mark. Look at these names scratched on the side of the case. B. Hawkins and D. Warren, Christmas Day, 1923. These cables are connected directly to the keys. And here's the wind chest, containing all the air to blow this organ's pipes. Here's the mechanism that attaches to the stops. If I were to stand inside this machine when it reached its powerful fortissimo, my eardrums would be blown to pieces. Organs are an extension of the building which they occupy. They're designed to be heard from the nave part of the awe, the terror of the pipe organ, is that its sound appears to be coming from nowhere. It overwhelms the listener. It overwhelms the player too. All four limbs are drawn into its heavy mechanical action, unreleased until the final monumental climax.